again. So, uh, talk about third video. We will talk about more about underhooks and um, and how I would recommend you use them and how you maybe should not use them. So, uh, let's take a, let's talk about now from half card. So, from half card, let's say uh, you're here, like uh, let's say on your elbow. And many people, I call this actually cheating. They're just grabbing that with a gi, they're just grabbing, and even if it's a no gi, it's just mid back. But then if it just doesn't connect any, anywhere, it's kind of, let's say, it's easy to whizzer, it's easy to push, it's easy to go for your head, darses, marses, and definitely when you're on your shoulder. If somebody puts just an underhook and thinks this is it, and this is kind of, let's say, it's easy to just kill. So I'm emphasizing that if you reach, First of all, like think about it like a punch, and second of all, if you want to reach, then think about clicks. Last video we talked about the knee over the knee, and now I'm going to mention the hip. So this is there's many benefits because it actually puts your body in a very strong position. So if you underhook, look for that hip click that where you actually would grab in a wrestling and no gi match. So go. So this. So and now if he can reach this click, first of all, then the, he can pull the elbow back. It's not like he's here straight arm. And then he can also click, but then he's at the rose distance. So really, pull it here. So the head is up, back is straight, and there is no like a easy way to actually guillotine him now, or Dars and Mars him or Lars and Bars. So and he can also grab. We will show later. He can grab the bottom leg, like, and then push forward. And then it's not so easy to and like attack. And if I will try to attack, he's already pushing forward, and everything goes bad. So it's very, the leaning forward that from his part is very, 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 very important. And one of the things also how he gets his leg free is he pushes in. He doesn't pull his leg out. He actually pushes in. So what I mean by that, that, that bottom leg. So if I'm we're here, there's no pressure. This kind of gets stuck and you have to pull this leg out, pull this out. It's kind of weird to get up like this. And when you do this, your back gets like curved and everything. So what he has to do is have to push. And now my leg will get light and right away. And now he has to get right away leg up. If his knees are on the mat, this is already un untaking charge. But leg is up and now he can lean. And wizard, he can limp arm later probably, but wizard is killed by opposite pressure. So he circles to the hip, kind of drags my hip down. And I have a choice of letting go because I will get stuck soon. And maybe go here. I would actually emphasize as a defensive guy to go for a wrist and ready for a panda or a turtle or sit up, sit out, go to back, back, go to my back. And we will have those things. Yeah, grambies and everything else. So that's my uh, material probably for next video, do it again. So, but the killing the hips, really dragging the hips down. So push, push, push. And then it's like, I have to let go. Because otherwise, there's a, you know, different, if there would be a space, you can have those grips. This would be dangerous, I would go here. Because the, la the worst thing that would happen actually, what we talked about, defensive skill, you will leave your arm here and they will have a cross face or like get here and you get stuck here. So that means you kind of, you have to learn how to, how to let go, so to speak. And it's uh, from this side, yes. So the click is very important. And uh, so elbow, everything. And even my, my thing is usually when people go to elbow, I want to pull that leg up. I'll pull the knee up here and then I'm gonna drive and I'm gonna kill this underhook. So if he's covering my knee and pushes forward, if I start to lift the knee, the knee, go back a little bit, the knee is kinda, the body is in a way that if the distance is good. If he's a little bit grabbing like mid back, then there is a slack and I can really go and then, you know, uh, try to cancel his technique. But if he's really good position, kinda kills my knee right away and if I wanna pull it out, he can go really attack that. So. The clicks, it's the definition I have is kind of like a, you know, like a, like a coat button. You go like a click. So I'm looking for those things and they make you very, very strong. And I don't like to grab the gi. I kind of call it cheating because you know, in a gi you can grab mid back, you can just grab anywhere. But I'm looking for mechanical grips. And with the pants, I'm actually grabbing from the same place, but with pants there's more friction because it's not so slippery. So if you use underhooks, don't think of underhook as a default, like just go underhook. Under, underhook comes with a responsibility. You're getting darts and marsed. So there's a distance, let's begin. There's a distance to cover. Lay down, on shoulder. 
So if you, if you reach, the, it has to be a position for reaching. If I'm doing this, then it probably makes sense to frame my neck or grab my head and use maybe the Z guard, that's, that's very common. But if I'm leaning forward, then probably you have to kick me a little bit forward with my knee and then right away go up. So it comes with res responsibility to knowing more things. It's not like underhook, underhook. You put yourself too much into the, into the danger, necessary, not even necessary danger. So think about definitely treat underhook as a punch and uh, look for clicks, the knee click, the hip click, and underhook can be a wonderful thing. But, but if used wrong, it can be terrible, and you have to kind of know that while you're doing those techniques. So that was about it. Uh, so, till the next video.